And we're live. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Building Your Wellness Brand Within Your Community. I'm Dr. Alan Weinstein with my co-host, Dr. Randy Ross. Today's episode is brought to you by Epic Consulting, making sure your electronic presence is all it needs to be. The Community Wellness Day. Every great opportunity begins with the first step. Take that step with Community Wellness Day. The system, the official marketing program of healthcare professionals everywhere. The VIP app, the only application that allows you to bring your live hangouts just like this one to the desktops, iPhone, and Samsung devices of all the people that have you in their circles. Our apps look so good, people are going to want to lick them. And of course, Google in 10 minutes, a step-by-step -step guide to all things Google for your business. You could find out more at tinyurl.com forward slash Google in 10. Today's community health program, borrowed authority, booking and interviewing guests. Um, I think that's the only one I need to go to. Okay, so what I'm going to do is turn it over to my partner, co-host, Dr. Randy Ross. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us here today. Make sure if you're watching this on a page with a comments box, you let us know where you're hanging out from. I'm hanging out from the Jersey Shore. And Dr. Allen joins us from the beautiful Berkshire Mountains. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in there as well. If we don't get to them during the Hangout, we'll make sure to get back to you to answer all of your questions. So today we're going to talk about what's called borrowed authority and the reason why you do interviews. And, and, and I thought about this topic uh, because the last couple of weeks, this has come up with a number of people that we work with. We produce hangouts for people and, and manage some of their or, or improve their social media presence. So it has come up and people really say, well, why do I need to do that? And then if you explain to them why they need to do it, then they go into, well, I don't know if I can do that. So I thought it's really important to share with everyone what the process is and why it's really important and that it's nothing to be afraid of. So that is, that's really important to understand. So when you're doing a show like this, and most of you, if you've been following us, you know that probably a little more than 50% of the time we have guests that feature all different topics and areas of expertise. And that's because we want to share with you, our viewers, the most up-to-date information and the people that are considered the authorities on this top these topics so that you can learn from them and to learn how to manage this process of getting a guest and and then you know what you do once they're in the hangout with you is really not difficult so you might want to get a pen and paper take some notes there's just a couple of steps Dr. Allen has on the screen the the first thing booking guests and, and I'm going to tell you why I put that picture in there Dr. Allen because everybody thinks that they have to, you know, they themselves have to be an authority and I'm not important enough and who would want to be a guest on my show and blah, blah, blah. And any of you that have, you know, watched the news at all, if you follow any kind of social media, Obama just did interviews with three young people that are kind of well known on YouTube. And this particular girl with the green lipstick does her 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 videos from like a bathtub full of fruit loops so it was just to show you that if this girl who basically does these kooky videos in a bathtub full of cereal can get to interview the president of the United States I think that you could probably do this too so there's a few things to remember when you think of guests and normally what I tell people to do when I'm instructing them on this is just get out a piece of paper and a pen and just start writing down people that you know. If you're, you know, a chiropractor, a healthcare provider, what are the other healthcare providers in the community, other areas of specialties that you know? Or maybe you, this is always where you can get an opportunity to get to know someone um, where they have a specialty that you can highlight on your show and share different information than just your specialty with your viewers and your community. So more market is always good. Those are the people that you know, the people that already know you. It might be people, other business people or professionals in the community. It might be friends or relatives. Um, or maybe you have patients that have a certain uh, authoritative information that would be important for people to know. So, <coughs> excuse me, always start 
with your warm market and those are people that you know. The next level is the warm market contacts. And real simply what that means is the warm market that we just described, you want to ask them, look, we're, we're going to be hosting a show on, on various healthcare topics in our community. Do you have any relationships with people and health providers that might be interested in being a guest and being interviewed and sharing information about their specialty? You'll be surprised that when you ask for referrals, and I teach this everywhere in your business, this is just another element of it, that um, people will say, yeah, you know what, my brother-in-law is this, or my, my good friend of mine's a dentist in town, or this and that, and they kind of connect you, so it's not so much a cold kind of call or connection, it's a little bit of a warm connection. The other thing to do is that you can and should be following certain people in your community to align yourself with on social media. And so if you, uh, I'll just use um, you know Google Plus as an example because this is where we are. If you were following, if you're a, you know, a chiropractor and maybe you're, you're, you start following a, a dentist in town, the way you kind of get to know them a little bit is first start, you know, plus wanting them. If you're on Facebook, like them, make a comment, you know, uh, Dr. Alan Weinstein plus him, you know, that's a great article. Thanks for sharing that information. What happens is even on social media, people get to know you and there's that little bit of trust element that's built up. And now you could private message them after you do that a little bit and say, hey, Dr. Weinstein, you know, I'm Dr. Ross. I've seen you on G+. And um, I, I host a hangout every week on, on Health for Our Community. And I would like to know if you'd be interested in being a guest. That, it doesn't have to be any more than that. You know, don't think that you have to give this overwhelming amount of information. So that would be kind of your, what I always refer to as your social media markets. Okay? And the next thing is cold contacts or cold connections. And those are simply people that you think of that would be a great guest and you these are might be the ones you're shooting high for listen how high do you think this girl was, was shooting for when she said oh I'm gonna go interview you know the president of the United States so how high was she <laughs> <laughs> well if you watched any of those videos that is questionable Dr. Allen um, so so you know this is where sometimes you really kinda you know, shoot for that mark when, and I've done this with a few people, we have a couple of guests coming up that are really well known, very successful in the news, if you watch like Fox Business Channel they're on and stuff, and it was simply just a cold message on social media where I said, you know, I, I followed you, I watched you, I think what you have to say is really interesting, I, we have a weekly show, I think our viewers would be really interested in um, in, in having us, you know, interview you and be a guest, would, would that be something you'd be interested in? And here's the thing. Some people say yes. Some people say no. Some people don't respond. And that's okay. Don't take it personally. It's not a reflection on you. That's a reflection on them. Might not be something that they do. Might not be the right time. But don't worry about it. But here's the way, and if you do this, you'll see it doesn't take long to fill 52 weeks or you know or probably 48 weeks because you have holiday weeks in there but it's not that many people when you think about it or you have guests half the time or something like that so you know don't be afraid of those the the cold calling aspect of things um, or uh, you know or, or the you know the cold connection aspect of things if it's on social media so you know that's something that intimidates a lot of people but don't worry the worst thing someone could say is no you know yeah I want to just jump in for a second if sure. you don't mind Dr. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, I interview lots of guests for also for um, besides what we do together I have a number of companies that I do their marketing for and um, that I do um, live hangouts for. And one of them is Cairo Secure, the malpractice insurance carrier, which um, I think is the best mal malpractice insurance carrier. That's why I do their marketing. But um, that's neither here nor there. But we have um, a guest on every month. And literally, the first thing we do is when we invite those people on um, and tell them what our show's about, they all want to come on because they realize that we're going to have a very big reach. So there's something in it for them also. And when we sell them the concept of coming on the show, 
we tell them how big our reach really is because that is attractive for them. So that's number one. Number two, we ask them, to, of course, to tap their own database so that their people know they're going to be on the show, which they're always happy to do. And then um, the other aspect is once we pick that person, we then say, well, who else in the same field would benefit from um, their audience going to hear that person. So one of the things th that we've learned is, besides the speakers sending it out, that a lot of national and state associations um, wanted to promote our events because they are, you know, they sort of are getting out to their database and showing their database that they're on the cutting edge of all this technology and all this um, the, the content that we're producing so they wanted to produce it so um, at this point um, everyone in their own way is shooting for credit for the event even if they're just a guest and we like it that way I mean ultimately Cairo Secure gets all the credit because they work really hard um, to bring these people on it's really time-consuming to set up the guest to arrange everything but ultimately there's a lot of other people that benefit from every time you book another guest so um, think of it from who else from the guest that you connected with would benefit from knowing that that guest was on your show and tap into those people also that's a that's a really good point dr. Allen um, and and one of the other things, and this is where, you know, you have to appreciate the concept of borrowed authority, you know, using Dr. Allen's um, insurance company as an example, you know, they have a guest on who, who might be, uh, you know, someone that has to do with coding or compliance or whatever it might be, because that's obviously their business, they want to make sure that as few people get sued as possible, um, and that those people you now you now leverage their authority you know um, and it becomes part of the integration and this is for a whole nother all of the class but when you're optimizing these videos and hopefully anyone that's doing hangouts is optimizing them when they're done when you're optimizing them you're including the that particular person you know in your keywords in your tags and you're now aligned with them. Very often, what you'll see, and Dr. Allen and I love to do this when we when we when we sometimes just search people, is it's very interesting to see where you come up, where they come up. Now, they someone might Google that person that's really well known, and your hangout comes up. Well, now you've borrowed and leveraged their authority, and now you're viewed as an authority. So you you have to really appreciate, you know, the the full concept of this barred authority and how interviewing guests allows you to leverage that. Now one thing that I'm really big with, other people might not agree with me, I say don't comply, don't confirm. And what I mean by that simply is, um, when I'm requesting certain things from a guest, and it might be a short bio, an image, um, we usually give them a, uh, a slide at the end where they can promote something that they're doing. Okay, uh, it's it's important that they send that information to me before I actually put them on my calendar. And because off, not often, but from time to time, you'll get someone that'll say yes. They never send your information. Well, now you're scrambling to try and create the event. So people that I book know that two weeks out from the event I send them an email it gives them all the details of everything they need to know I have bullet items of the few not a lot of things that I'm requesting I do most of the work we'll get to that in a minute um, but they need to send me those things and guess what if they don't I do not put them on the calendar and I have no problem sending someone an email saying I didn't receive your information um, unfortunately at this time we can't move forward with your scheduled date let's reschedule for a date down the road and make sure you get me the information now not everyone would agree with me Dr. Allen may or may not but I know I'm not one that wants to do things last minute scrambling and begging you for stuff I'm asking for just a handful of things so I always say don't comply don't confirm yeah I do agree with you but I and I'm going to say um, there are circumstances because of the length of time that we've been doing these shows and because of a number of people that we always have in, on the list that want to be on the show, we somewhat are in a unique situation because we could always say, you know what, 
let's get so and so on the show or we could even do a show ourselves like we're doing today and not use a guest so that's you always gotta have a backup but I will tell you I have had uh, people scheduled who send me everything and then they don't show at the time of the event and then you're like dancing your way through the event because you could do nothing more than apologize um, we don't where are they you know I had an event on Tuesday um, where the speaker was very late. Um, I usually get my speaker on a half hour before. You probably will talk a little bit about that kind of um, protocols. Um, and I, you know, emailed him a couple of days before. Do you want to do a trial run? We've already had done a trial one run once before. And then here it is: ten minutes to showtime, nothing. Ten minutes to showtime, nothing. Five minutes to showtime, nobody. Five minutes after showtime, now I'm starting to freak out. And then finally the person contacts me and says, I can't get on the Hangout. And when I say, just click this link, they remember, oh, I don't have a camera or a microphone on this computer. Oh, God. Yeah, you're right. And some things will happen. I remember one, one interview we did, um, oh, oh, it was Dave Major. He, he got kicked out and then, like, it wouldn't let him back in the room. Like we could see him faintly in the in the film strip in the bottom, but it wouldn't like really let him back in. Right. You got you gotta be able to ad lib a little bit. So that's the time when you just start talking about something. Hopefully, someone else jumps in the room. That's why it's great to have co-hosts. That's why Dr. Allen and I do it this way. Sure. For a multitude of reasons. One, we could just talk for thirty minutes about pretty much any topic if we had to. But it's also great to have. Um, a co-host, and I didn't even really have this in the notes, uh, because sometimes you'll have a guest that's not a great guest, that's kind of the nice way I can say that, where I'm thinking, oh my god, like, we're 10 minutes into the show and I've asked all my questions, and because Dr. Allen and I know each other so well, he kind of knows that look on my face like, you know, help me here, and he'll chime in and ask a question that allows them to elaborate somewhat or, you know, just start talking about something. So that's not, you know, in the in the slides that we have, but it, it is a, a nice feature to uh, to to have a co-host, especially... And, and let me add one more piece about that. Actually, two things I'll say. Number one is it's also good when you're working with a co-host to also keep them a little bit outside of the loop so you could say something that they're not expecting because then it brings them to a, they're going, where, where is this coming from? No, but that's right? only you, Dr. Allen. He, oh. he, he, any of you that, that know me well, we always say, he, I think his, one of his goals on our Hangouts is to derail me and see if I can bring it back. It's, <laughs> right, like, it's, like, it's like a training session for me. <laughs> Um, so the next thing we're going to get to, Dr. Allen, if you want to bring your slides back, is uh, is preparing the guest. Well, the one thing that I did forget to mention was do your homework. I'm not saying that you have to research this person to death, you know, like you know your your uh, ABC 60 minutes, but know a little bit about them because you'll probably be able to to determine what you actually want the topic to be, what relates to what you're doing, and give them that direction. So I'm very big on preparation. I'm always, I always want to prepare guests. So I do a pre-interview. Uh, I do most of the work for them. You know, when I say they have to send me things, I have to tell you it's really just a couple of things that there's very few people that wouldn't have that prepared. I even have a, a standard set of questions. I just kind of tweak them to the particular guest, but I send them those and tell them, you know, if you're comfortable with these, we'll go with this. Send me something as an alternative if you like. So it's, we're not asking them to do very much work at all, but we we ask them to um, you know to show up to do a pre-interview. We get on a hangout like this. Takes usually about ten minutes unless they're a really chatty person, and a lot of times they're people that have not done hangouts. So you want to get them familiar with being inside a hangout. Now you can't see this, but we have a whole broadcast room here. One of the things I show them, just as an example, is you see a lower third that Dr. Allen and I have. And you want someone to have a lower third. It defines them. It identifies them. It might seem like something small, but it's really important. We show them 
where there's a little chat box that they keep open in case in the middle of, uh, of the program there's a question that needs to be asked. Um, and there are a few other features that we show them. More than anything else, if it's someone that's never been on a Hangout, you want to make sure that they have the proper equipment. Uh, you know, it's certain plugins for a Google Hangout that someone may or may not have on their computer. So getting someone on, explaining them, giving them kind of the timeline. You know, we spend about two minutes with an introduction and our sponsors and, you know, just kind of going through it. It just makes someone comfortable when people are more comfortable they're more apt to give you a better show. Uh, so that's, that's my, my pre-interview process. It shouldn't take you more than 10 or 15 minutes. The other thing that's really awesome about it is it gives you an opportunity to really connect with that person, whether they're someone you know really well or not. It's that little kind of private meeting that you get with them that's really nice to get connected with them and build that relationship. One of the things I was going to say is, for those people that are not um, very well versed in Google Hangouts, or even if you are, and you just want to have a great manual that you could use as a reference, the Google in 10 minutes, the step-by-step um, -step, all things Google for your business that Dr. Randy and I wrote together, check that out at tinyurl.com forward slash Google in 10, because there's a whole thing of do's and don'ts that you can actually, if you buy that, supply your guest which will tell them about simple things looking in the camera the height of the camera um, being direct wired all the things that they need to know that you could actually send them um, in advance absolutely and and that is all um, that's include I have a standard email that I just copy and paste and change the name at the top and the date that I that I send to um, to all of the guests that are that are coming on the show so the next thing is uh, interviewing the guest. So you've booked your guest, you've done a pre-interview, you've prepared them, and now they're on the show and you're going to go ahead and interview them. The, one of the first things, and Dr. Allen mentioned this before, is get on early. I mean, our show starts at 1.30 Eastern. I usually dial in around 1, 5 after 1. Um, there are a few things that we do. We simulcast our show in five places, so I have to put links and messages in those places for when the event starts. And I'm always, you know, we, I check the sound and, and, and a few other things, bring up the lower third. I usually ask the guest to come on 15 or 20 minutes before. Again, double check their sound, their audio, um, you know, make sure that they're, they're you, when we have more than two people, we need earbuds, make sure they have their earbuds there so we don't get that reverb that's really annoying to listen to. And, and kind of uh, position them as an authority, and what I mean by that is when you're interviewing them, you want to use words like that. So I would say things like, Dr. Allen, because you are an expert in marketing for healthcare providers, see, I just set up the question. I, I, I positioned their authority. In the slide you see on the screen, this is, to me, probably one of our most interesting guests was, was uh, Dan Stauffer. He's actually a pastor, but ties everything into, you know, the, the, the business of running, uh, you know, the, the church that he runs. Uh, and you know, I, I, every question I asked him, I tied it back to, you know, as an authority on the business aspect of running the church, it's, you're always positioning them as an authority. And that's important to them, and it's important to you because, remember, we're going back to leveraging that person's authority on this particular topic. So you want to preface some of your questions that way as positioning. I always like to ask the prepared questions, although as Dr. Allen indicated, he very often likes to kind of take the conversation in a <clears throat> non-direction that we weren't prepared for, but people seem to be okay with it, and it makes for an interesting, uh, you know, an interesting interview. Yeah, I think, you know, interestingly enough about, let me just say one thing about that, and I just want to then add one thing to what you said, and that is sometimes when you do that, a lot of times what I do with every guest that I interview is I ask them for three questions they want to be asked so that they feel they come in much more relaxed and much more comfortable because if they have no clue where you're going and you only give them your questions ahead of time, well then they're at home studying, preparing, you know, what, what, you know, I gotta be prepared to do this. 
But when you ask them for some of their own questions, they feel, oh, this is a cakewalk. They're going to ask me about what I really know lots about. And then ultimately, once we give them that comfort and they feel relaxed, they're in the room, they now feel like, really, I'm on top of my game here. Then we bring out a question that they may not be expecting because they're already at a point where they're more confident in the experience. They're not already nervous, and then I ask them a question, or Dr. Randy asks them a question that they weren't expecting, and then they're like, you know, stuttering to, you know, figure out. They're already relaxed, and they laid back. They read. They realize this is not that big a deal, you know. Um, so, so you know, do things that make them comfortable, make them the hero, and then you deserve the right at that point to sort of sneak a curveball in there and see what kind of response. Because it makes your show, it makes your show more spontaneous. People don't like to think people are rehearsed. People don't like to think people are, you know, they've already reviewed everything. That spontaneity adds more to your credibility once um, you're already doing it. And believe me, you can make mistakes. Dan Staffer, instead of calling him pastor, I call him doctor. Every time he's on the show, I've called the guy doctor 14 times, right? Yes. It's crazy. Well, so, so we are like officially like the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. This is like reality hangout TV. That's right. TV. That's right. And then there are one of our last guests, which I can't remember his name right now, I actually said to him, I pronounced his name wrong. Um, um, the, the chiropractor, I can't believe. Oh, so Ray, Ray Olmed? No, no, from, from Life College. Um, Gilles, Gilles Lamarche. Dr. Gilles, 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 right? Gilles, Gilles Lamarche. Right, yeah. And I said, how do you pronounce your name? And he goes, Gilles. I said, is it Gilles? He goes, yeah, yeah. And then when I get on, when I introduce him, I re introduce him as Gilly. <laughs> well, as long as you don't mispronounce my name, that's really all that matters. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, and sometimes it's not easy. I mean, it is true what Dr. Allen says. We want the show to be a little bit interesting. But also, a lot of times what will happen is they'll they'll bring out a point, and I know this is the way I operate, and I know something that they said there's a there's a, a smaller more valid point in there that needs to be brought out so I will ask them you know you just mentioned you know some whatever it is blah 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 can you talk a little bit more about something that in that elements in there that I know is of interest to our viewers or I know from all the people that Dr. Allen and I deal with we know that that's a particular challenge that people face or something that they don't understand or a disconnect so when they when people hear it again from someone of authority it just kind of reinforces some of what we try and share with them so sometimes it's about really listening and elaborating. Um, I also do something now where I have little note cards and I take notes. I call it um, Randy's Recap and when the guest is done I kind of hold my little note card up and I, just a couple of things that were my takeaways, were things that I thought were important that came out during the interview uh, to kind of you know bring it all together and, and bring it home. And, and something else that you want to make sure not to forget to do is you want to at the end you want to promote your guest, whether they have, you know, uh, a book that they just wrote, or they offer some type of consultation when you go to their website, or whatever it might be. Um, you want to extend that courtesy, and that's okay. It doesn't make you a 30-minute infomercial to do what we do, is where we mention our sponsors in the beginning and the end, and then we give, uh, you know, the information where the the guest gives us something to promote for them and for me you know Dr. Allen is 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 a little more off the cuff but for me and for those of you that that are not experienced at this just be prepared that's the first thing and um, like you can't see but right now next to my screen I have the little notes of the slides that Dr. Allen had so I didn't forget to talk about anything some people don't need that. You know, that works best for me that I kind of remind myself and not to forget something. But uh, be prepared. And the other thing is that one of the things that's so important to remember when people start being afraid to ask someone to be a guest, I'd ask anyone to be a guest. You know, for me, if I think they have value for our program, if you don't ask, they can't say yes. And I will tell you that more yeses will be heard by your ears than no's 
you I think that I probably have I have about probably 90% of people respond to my request and and 10% just kind of never answer for whatever reason they're usually people that don't know me that well um, and of that 90% I will say 85% ultimately become guests some people it's not what they do even though I tell them you know we'll, we'll do a pre-interview I'll get you comfortable it's just not what they do the other thing that's really important to remember and Dr. Allen and I could both both definitely testify to this is that when you start doing hangouts all the time and you are then viewed as an authority, whether it's wellness in your community or, or we do, uh, you know, hosting a community health program, I call it relationship marketing, different elements of marketing that Dr. Allen does that we share all the people we bring on. All of a sudden, you're going to hear your phone ring or your email ding up with people that have followed you and see you as an authority and now want you to be a guest. I just recently, like in the last couple weeks, got contacted by a woman in Canada that works with medical doctors that loves what we do on the show, loves what we talk about, wants me to come on and be a guest on her show. And there's a gentleman in, I think it's New South Wales in Australia that contacted me that he'd been following our shows and he has this big uh, kind of summit that he puts together and he thinks that what we talk about with relationship marketing and building your business that way is so important so I didn't know these people but now I have business relationships with them because they've seen our show and now I'm an authority so it comes around full circle uh, you know don't make light of this it has a lot of value and I know Dr. Allen wants to jump in on that yeah one thing I wanted to say when we talk about borrowing authority I want people to realize that about two and a half years ago, almost three years ago, I made it a point to get on every single hangout that Alex Mandosian has done, and I became known as the most um, recognizable face on hangouts as a consequence of that. And I still do that. And literally, um, when I um, people know me so well from his that I have become an authority just from borrowing his authority so to speak so definitely want to leverage that also if you know there's somebody a group or something that you feel wow these people would turn out to be great guests on my show then ultimately um, go ahead take a little time when they're having a hangout show up on their hangout when they invite you in go in there even if you make up questions you know they'll always say if you have a question come in I make up questions and most of the questions I ask I know the answer to I still ask the question and they start to rely on you coming on they know if nobody else is there Dr. Allen's gonna wind up on my show and in fact those who follow me know I've actually hosted Alex's show when he's been on the road because people recognize me and and give me such authority as a consequence that they're, they're just as happy for me to be on the show as Alex is because they're, they're going to get good information one other thing I wanted to say is uh, is also don't be afraid on these shows to have a sense of humor um, re, you don't be so take yourself so seriously either we always try to have a good time for example let me just show you um, this picture um, it just again make the show light make a show let me just do a screen share here quickly here this is a picture of me last Saturday everyone knows that um, I love to um, I love motorcycle riding and here we are in the Berkshires it's been a brutal winter some days 45 50 degrees and last Saturday I said to Susan my wife I want to at least take my bike out and um, do a quick ride I'll wait for you outside she said I'll be there in five minutes, and this is what happened to me. <laughs> so, so don't be afraid to have a, add a little humor to the show. Well, and Dr. Allen is known for that. That's for sure. He always, uh, he, he always, always has. We always say that invaluable two cents. That's for sure. Well, I hope that you 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 all feel that it's something you can do. And you know what? It is fun. I look forward to this time every week. Um, I learn a lot from our guests, uh, and uh, you know, I, I love the opportunity to do this. 
don't worry if you're not great at it when you first start. Um, you'll get better as time goes on. I was when I go back and look at the first hangouts, I did they were horrible. But it's like anything else. Just do it. You'll get better. People will get to know you. And 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 I'm just gonna gonna kind of finish with this, and I'm gonna turn over to Dr. Allen to close this out because I know we're running a few minutes late. Google Hangouts is the what you want to be doing now because you're going to be ahead of the curve of most people in your community. Not a lot of people are using this tool, but it gives you tremendous business visibility. So take advantage of it, utilize it, utilize it as a relationship marketing tool. People are, are very they're they're very uh, impressed and they're very grateful when you ask them to be a guest on your show. It initiates that relationship for other opportunities in your community. So please go ahead and do this. If you go go order our book, if you the manual, that will take you through everything. If you're still stumped and, and you would like us to talk to you about, you know, us producing a hangout for you, that's an option as well. But take advantage of this. This is an amazing tool right now, and Google loves when you use their programs and their products. And guess what? That moves you off the page. All right. Well, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Allen to close us out. Okay. One thing I want to add that we didn't talk about. I'll just take two seconds. I apologize for doing that because I know we're running a couple minutes late. Don't be afraid to take advantage of building a relationship with someone you interviewed when the hangout is over because they might be sitting there saying to themselves boy I wish I knew how to do this and here you are an expert like Dr. Randy or myself in hangouts they're sitting there I wish I could do this and all you have to say when it's over hey man you did a great job we're so glad we had you on the show have you ever thought of doing hangouts for your own business and now you all of a sudden are going in the direction where they might hire you. They might be somebody on your show that has some type of authority that might get you patience. Or they might get you to somebody else. Take advantage of it. You now have developed a relationship once the show ends and take advantage of that relationship. Anyway, um, you've been watching Building Your Wellness Brand Within Your Community. I'm Dr. Alan Weinstein with my co-host Dr. Randy Ross. Today's episode is brought to you by Epic Consulting, making sure your electro electronic little presence is all it needs to be. Um, community Wellness Day, every great opportunity begins with the first step. Take that step with Community Wellness Day. The system, the official marketing program of healthcare professionals everywhere, and by the way, we teach all of our clients to do Hangouts, so that's something you want to know. Um, the VIP app, the only application that allows you to bring your live Hangouts just like this one to the desktop, iPhones, and Samsung mobile devices of everyone who has you in their circles. Of course, Google in 10 minutes just released, tinyurl.com forward slash Google in 10, and literally it has all the things you need to know about um, doing Google's um, uh, Google on your own. On behalf of myself, Dr. Alan Weinstein, and Dr. Andy Ross, We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great day, everybody.